There's no gentle way to put it, it's tough being a sandwich chain these days. Could Subway be on its way out? And which franchises still stand a chance? Founded in 1981, Quiznos is known for its delicious toasted subs and its interesting TV commercials, featuring the bizarre mascot known as the Sponge Monkeys in the early 2000s. During a time when cold deli meat sandwiches were common, Quiznos stood out for its quality and flavor. While the toasted sandwich chain grew for decades, its luck changed when economic conditions took a downturn. Restaurant Business reported in 2018 that from the height of its success in 2007, with 4,700 locations worldwide, Quiznos closed thousands of locations during the Great Recession and filed Chapter 11 bankruptcy in 2014. According to QSR, the sandwich chain faced lawsuits from franchises about strict purchasing policies and struggled when workers spent less on workday lunches during the recession. Many of its locations are in office buildings, so it relied on workers buying meals during lunch breaks. As the Denver Business Journal wrote in 2018, Quiznos was acquired by private investment firm High Bluff Capital Partners and is down to less than 300 U.S. locations today. Subway was founded in 1965 by Peter Buck and Fred DeLuca and started franchise operations in 1974. According to Restaurant Business, Subway captured 41% of the market for a limited-service sandwich chain and established market dominance alongside other fast food concepts like McDonald's. In 2015, the New York Times reported that the former Subway spokesman Jared Fogle pled guilty to sex acts with minors and the distribution of sexually explicit materials featuring children and got 15 years in prison. The company took a hit in the PR department and they've been sliding ever since. There were also franchise concerns and low revenue per unit due to overexpansion. Subway closed 2,400 locations in 2021 as sales dropped by $210 million in the United States, according to Business Insider. Since franchisers often own only a few stores, this can put them in a weaker position to withstand weak sales and brand scandals. As a result, more locations will likely close in the future. Jimmy John's was founded in 1983 with a limited menu that included just four sandwiches on freshly baked bread. For decades, it slowly grew in the number of locations across the United States. QSR reported that sales grew from $780 million in 2010 to $2.1 billion in 2018, with an impressive 148% growth in the number of locations over nine years. Like other sandwich chains during the pandemic, the chain struggled as its main business is around lunchtime for workers. Without the foot traffic, traffic from commuters and office workers, sales slumped. Additionally, in February 2020, the FDA sent Jimmy John's a warning about E. coli outbreaks related to its clover sprouts and cucumbers. Frank Giannis, the deputy commissioner for food policy and response at the FDA, stated, Jimmy John's restaurants have been implicated in multiple outbreaks that have spanned the past seven years and impacted consumers in no fewer than 17 states. Jimmy John's has not demonstrated implementation of long-term sustainable corrections to its supply chain to assure the safety of ingredients used in its products. Blimpy, known as America's Sub Shop, opened in 1964 in Hoboken, New Jersey, as one of the first sub sandwich chains. Over more than 50 years, the sandwich chain continued to grow in sales and name recognition. The chain started to face more challenges with increased competition within the sandwich space. According to USA Today in 2012, Blimpy closed 1,114 stores between 2001 and 2011. Its sales declined by 60.1%. There are only a bit over 150 stores remaining in the U.S. in 2022. Some franchisees noted high setup costs, ongoing fees, and tough restrictions as detriments to keeping stores open. Former franchisee Mike Bell told the Bristol Press that there was a limited amount of franchise marketing for a company that was once a market leader. According to Franchising.com, Blimpy is taking significant action to try to boost its sales. The company is expanding into new markets, including Southeast Asia. It is also testing the waters for meat alternatives in its menu items as well as adding new flavor options to service a wider customer base. While some of these options are temporary as an experiment, the company is expected to keep several recipes and ingredient additions long term. When the pandemic started, Le Pen Quotidien operated 98 locations across the United States. According to USA Today, 56% of the company's sales came from New York City, an area especially hit by the COVID-19 pandemic and its related shutdowns. During this time, the New York City area was described as the epicenter for the COVID-19 pandemic. Prior to the pandemic, the chain was struggling financially and started plans to restructure its operations through bankruptcy. Because of the challenging conditions of the pandemic and the increased 
competition, it faced significant financial difficulties. As a result, La Pan Quotidienne filed Chapter 11 bankruptcy in 2020, and all of its locations closed with that action. According to Forbes, a new owner, Orify Brands, relaunched 52 locations to keep the brand alive. It bought the La Pan Quotidienne for $5 million, along with the 11 locations of the bakery chain Maison Kaiser for $3 million. Orify Brands launched the La Pan Quotidienne mobile app and reopened the Maison Kaiser stores as La Pan Quotidienne locations in 2021. As of now, there's less than 50 locations. According to CNBC, Potbelly Sandwich Shop took out a $10 million Paycheck Protection Program loan from the U.S. government in 2020 before returning the funds because of outrage of large businesses taking funds aimed at helping small businesses. As a result of the pandemic, it closed around 25 restaurants, according to Restaurant Business. This is a big departure from just seven years earlier, when the company completed its IPO in 2013. According to Forbes, the IPO intended to raise $75 million. At the time, Potbelly Sandwich Shop had locations in 18 states and overseas with a lot more potential to grow through franchising. Unfortunately, the company went in the other direction because of difficulties like the COVID-19 pandemic and a global recession. It appears that the problem started before the IPO finished. Forbes reported that of the $75 million that was expected, at least $50 million was already flagged for a dividend payout and to handle existing debt, rather than to fuel the growth of the company. Had that money gone toward growth and expansion or to reinforce the company, Potbelly may not have had to close its stores. I say what the Greeks would say. Aftoime on a sandwich! According to QSR in 2011, Arby's suffered substantially during recessions, posting shrinking margins during the Great Recession. Arby's has a more expensive menu than other fast food restaurants. Specifically, the QSR identified Arby's lack of a $1 menu as one of the drivers of poor performance for Arby's during economic recessions, as diners simply opt to eat somewhere that's more affordable. Before the pandemic, the sales performance of Arby's had improved to post 10 years of positive same-store sales, according to CNBC. It launched its first Latin American location in Guadalajara, Mexico in October 2020. While the opening was delayed due to pandemic disruptions, it did go ahead and open the restaurant, a sign of growth amid the risk. Another economic downturn caused by the labor shortages and rising costs during the pandemic could adversely impact the company's ability to stay competitive. Its food is still priced considerably higher than other fast food restaurants. If post-pandemic economic conditions are poor, this could be a significant challenge for Arby's. Jason's Deli, a deli chain founded in Beaumont, Texas, is incredibly popular with customers. An insider reported that Jason's Deli is the most profitable deli chain, with average sales exceeding $2.6 million per unit in 2015. With such high profitability numbers, one can expect that Jason's Deli will survive the pandemic. However, it is seeing financial troubles just like everyone else. According to Restaurant Business, Jason's Deli permanently closed around 10%, 22 units of its total restaurants as a result of the pandemic. The dip in profitability is putting pressure on the company to cut costs without changing the quality of its offerings. Several more locations are expected to close if market conditions do not change soon. Speculation about the direction of the company Company has increased since the death of the founder. Jason's Deli's founder, Joe Totors Jr., died in 2019. Management new to the company is navigating the pandemic, which may contribute to the ongoing struggle to keep the company afloat. Fortunately, the company is continuing to expand with new locations being built in multiple Texas cities within the last six months, including San Angelo and Richardson. Witch Witch opened its first location in Dallas in 2003 and began the process of franchising in 2005. It's known for its unique number system, where customers use markers to mark what they want to order on a paper sandwich bag. Many Witch Witch franchisers closed up shop during the COVID-19 pandemic as a result of financial distress and low foot traffic. According to Manisha Patel, the franchise owner of the Ann Arbor location, in an article for M Live, the decision to close the restaurant was related to labor shortages. Many businesses, especially those in the restaurant sector, are having trouble finding people to fill available positions. For sandwich chains located in downtown areas, the combination of staff shortages and lower foot traffic for lunch shifts as workers telecommute can be difficult to overcome. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more mashed videos about sandwich shops are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.